Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Precision. I'm here with the great, the one, the only, Jared Feather. And we are gonna be demonstrating barbell curls to get huge guns, a few mistakes, and how to correct them. Just a quick, obvious note, the target of the barbell curl is the biceps. But remember that there's a few other muscles in there that are called forearm flexors. They do this, they're also targets and your actual form is gonna get pretty jacked too. So yeah, the biceps are the most important, but in general, we want bigger arms, bigger forearms, all the flexors there. Let's get at it. Let's take a look at the first mistake. All right, the first mistake, as you may have predicted, is using too low of a range of motion. It's tempting because you can use more weight, but unfortunately it doesn't stress the muscle using all of its motor units. It doesn't provide any tension under stretch. It doesn't provide a peak contraction, which is not exactly great. And you end up using a lot of weight to accomplish as much or less, which is just super fatiguing to the rest of your body because if you have to pick up 135 pounds and drag it out and do curls with it, there's a certain amount of spinal loading, so on and so forth, and leaning forward with it just sucks. If you can use less weight through a bigger range of motion, that's best. Jared, show us a typical uh, partial range of motion bicep curl that folks do. Yeah, like, hey, we're doing curls, sort of, and you know, it, it doesn't even come all the way down or go all the way up. So there are two ways to fix this. You can, that's good enough. Two ways to fix this. One way is to do the traditional barbell curl where you start fully extended and come up with no elbow movement until your biceps are taken through a full range of motion. That's totally fine way to do it. That's super cool. The other way to do it is to actually involve some shoulder flexion. Your elbows end up moving up and you move the curl all the way up to your face. People say like, wait, but you're using front delts. The thing is the biceps are a shoulder flexor. They are involved in the movement of pushing your elbows forward. So it's totally fine to use them there as well. Which technique is best? It's not clear and it really comes down to preference and comfort. You can do either one. Just make sure that if you're telling yourself you're not doing any flexion, stop when your biceps hit and don't stop here or something like that. Full range of motion either way is totally fine. The next mistake, as you may have also predicted, is an uncontrolled eccentric. The descent of the bicep curl, if it is controlled, supplies an eccentric contraction to the biceps, which grows them a ton. If you curl as hard as you can on the way up, but then drop the weight, you can do more reps. But there's no magic rep counter in the sky that's saying, oh, you're amazing if you did 10 reps or whatever. It's all about making sure you milk everything out of each rep, which means control and tons of force on the concentric and control and eccentric as well. Jared, show us what the mistake looks like. Pretty decent curl and then bloop, it drops down and pretty decent curl and bloop. And it's really tempting to do this, good enough. It's really tempting to do this because you can do more reps and it's really tough to do an eccentric controlled contraction. Does the eccentric have to be like three or five seconds long? No, that's definitely an option if you wanna try it as a variation. But in general, just make sure you're actively contracting the muscles and slowing the bar down against gravity. Jared, can you show us what that looks like? So the concentric uh, movement is gonna look pretty much the same but then the eccentric is controlled. And notice he's not going super slow, but he's making sure that he's fighting against gravity on the way down, which provides an independent hypertrophic stimulus to his biceps. The next mistake in bicep curls happens all the time in gyms all across the world is not having a standard range of motion for each rep. Some reps are full, some reps are partial, some reps are somewhere in between. You can't count how many reps you're doing accurately. You can't accurately track your performance. You can't tell if you're overloading enough. You know, you did 15 reps last week. How many reps do you do at the same weight this week? Well, what the hell is a rep? If some of the reps were different uh, degrees of range of motion, you don't even know if you're doing more mechanical work this week than last week, even if you do know the rep number. In order to be accurate about progressively overloading and tracking, see if you're actually getting stronger, actually getting bigger, you have to use a essentially very similar technique, rep to rep to rep. The cool thing is, is if you go all the way up and all the way down, it's self-standardizes. Jared, show us the mistake here that some folks make, do about three reps, and one of them's pretty decent, and then the next one's like, uh, sort of stopped halfway, and then one just doesn't go all the way down. Every rep looks weird, every rep is not countable against the others, or against other weeks, and so on and so forth. But, if Jared was to do proper barbell curls, then every rep was essentially going to look almost identical. He's gonna curl up and all the way down and all the way up and all the way down. It's super easy to keep track. And let's say he goes to failure. Jared, can you fake failure for us? Oh, 
and then up, 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 and let's do one more. Let's say hey, fail halfway through. Just go halfway up. Oh, he can't do any more. Boom, that's it. So that failure point, remember, we've had, let's say it was 14 reps, and then that half rep. Because you know all the reps were the same distance moved, you can count that 14 as like, okay, I got exactly 14, I couldn't get 15. Because some people say like, when they fail right here, they put it down, they're like, 15. Like, 15 of what? That wasn't a full rep, motherfucker. That doesn't count. So you know you did 14 at a certain weight, deload or whatever, move on to your next week. Later, when you're progressing and you're tracking, you can know, okay, at 65 pounds, I got 14 reps for sure because everything was the same range of motion and I couldn't get my full range of motion. I failed on the 15th rep, which is to say I can check only 14. Then you got 15 reps or 16 reps, you can be sure you got bigger slash stronger and you're progressing because all the reps were identical, you know you actually made gains. Whereas if you do this and some reps are weird and you sort of hit maybe failure and one of the reps, you sort of maybe count it, you have no idea what's going on anymore. It prevents accurate overloading and accurate tracking. How much should your body lean during curls? A lot of folks get really particular about making sure to stand up super straight, not leaning back at all, not leaning forward. The answer is if you don't move uh, with a ton of momentum, which we'll get to in another mistake, you can lean whatever feels best. Make sure it's standardized and it's the same rep to rep. So for example, some folks like to do curls straight up and down. So they have a very rigid body posture and they'll do a curl just like that and their whole body is straight up and down. Yep, just like that, perfect. And then some folks like to tilt their hips back, get a little bit of uh, some action here in the biceps, and then they're gonna be curling more forward. It's a different sensation, slightly different mind-muscle connection for the biceps. This is not wrong, as long as you know it's a separate type of approach, separate kind of exercise. So go ahead and rack. Don't mix the reps in the same set and don't mix the reps set to set to set, but tell yourself in your logbook, I'm doing curls, normal, just say barbell curls, and then you do them straight with no lean. And then you, later, a month or two, you can use a variant where you can say, okay, I'm doing slightly lean curls, in which case you lean forward a little bit and get that real nasty peak contraction at the top. Not any one of those is wrong or right. It's just a matter of preference. Some people even like to lean back a bit, and that's totally fine as long as they stay that way. The next mistake, maybe the most common mistakes in gyms across the world for any exercise, it's cheating by using swinging and momentum on the barbell bicep curl. What is the point of cheating? To use more weight so that that guy over there in the corner finally gives you the kind of look you were asking for and you go on the best date ever, he buys you champagne. It's fucking love at first sight, unbelievable. It's all because you cheated your way to curling 205 pounds where you really weren't strong enough to curl 65 pounds for all reps. So here's the deal. The target is the biceps. We're gonna make our body rigid and only move our shoulder and elbow to target the biceps. None of this bullshit. Jared, show us what a real manly swing curl looks like. Cheat to grow, bro. You got us all starts at the hips. Oh man, yep. It's basically a glute exercise with your arms sort of cursorily involved. Good enough, very good. Show us the right way to do it, right? Everything's rigid, notice his shoulders move a little bit, his elbows move a ton, and that's it. And if you start approaching failure, do you start cheating? Yeah, no, right? If you start approaching failure, show us what going to actual failure looks like. Up, oh, and then there's a huge temptation to get another rep with cheating. Don't do it, that's it, that's failure. Let the biceps be the limiting factor. There is a technical reason why cheating is a bad idea. It's not just like some ego shit, we're like, don't fuck cheat, bro. If you cheat, and you move with your hips, you're getting more stimulus to the muscles of your hips, your back, your glutes. Are you fucking training those when you're doing curls? No, you're not, you're training your biceps. Does it help activate your biceps more by swinging? No, not really. As a matter of fact, it takes your technique and your mind-muscle connection away from your biceps and it makes you sort of think about just get the weight up. The best way to do it is really focus on your biceps. Strict technique, don't move and grind your biceps into the movement. When they fail, push them harder. And then when you can't do it anymore, that entire set was first of all limited by biceps, so you know you got a great set. You went truly as close to failure as you wanted. You didn't use any other assistance muscles. And also, 
If you start using the other muscles, they start to fatigue. If you're using way more weight than you need to, swinging it around, that's more volume for the rest of your body that you're using. Instead of recovering as best as you can for later glute training and later back training, you're essentially adding a bit of fatigue using bicep curls with too much weight. It's inter gonna interfere with your back workouts, with your deadlifts, with your squats, and so on and so forth. Keep muscle training to the target muscle. Use your biceps for bicep curls, Fucking weird idea, I know. And then if you want bigger glutes, do some deadlifts or do some uh, you know, elevated glute bridges or something to actually target the glutes when they're supposed to go. Don't mix the two and don't fucking cheat yourself and don't lie to yourself. If you can only curl 65 pounds on a barbell for a set of 10, that doesn't matter. Who gives a shit? All that matters is how big your biceps are. And that's the statement about life in general. How do you get bigger biceps? You start where you start, the 65, and you slowly do a few more reps, and then you're doing 70, and then you're doing 75, and then you have giant biceps and everything in your life is perfect. An interesting mistake that a lot of folks make when they get into the super technique and biomechanics heavy side of things is thinking that their technique has to be so perfect that it actually starts violating the laws of physics, specifically mechanics. People will say, you know, they'll watch you curl a really decent weight and they'll say, how come you're not standing straight up? Like when you're curling, you lean back a little bit. When you're curling, you lean back a little bit because your center of gravity moves forward when you push weight ahead of you. You have to lean back to compensate so you don't fall forward. It has to happen to some extent. And the more weight you're using relative to your body weight, the more you have to lean back a little bit to in order not to fall. Jared, show us what that looks like. People get really strict, they do that, whoop, and then they have to adjust with a step. Do a real curl, it's okay to lean back a little bit, and if we had more weight on the bar, Jared would have to lean back even a little more to make sure that he didn't fall forward. So, perfect, good enough. When you are aiming for strictness, make sure it's realistic strictness and not something that's completely insane, violates the laws of physics, and doesn't allow for body compensation. It's okay for your body to naturally move forward and back a little bit to adjust for momentum differences and adjust for center of gravity differences and center of mass differences. That's totally fine, and you know you're doing that well when you're not actively trying to cheat, because people say, well, that's cheating. Cheating, you fucking know when you're cheating. When you're totally stable, but you're like, Ugh, I'm gonna use my hips, that's fucking cheating. If as you're curling, you have to lean back a little bit so you don't fall forward, that's 100% fine. The next mistake is grip confusion and failing to detect a really good mind-muscle connection and get a really good stimulus. Two are very, very much tied together. So folks will say, what's the optimal grip for barbell curls? It doesn't exist because human genetic variation in anthropometry is really high. Some folks actually feel their biceps most when they get a wide grip and it hurts their elbows and shoulders the least and they can use the most weight under control. Some folks prefer a medium grip, which is gonna look something like that. And some folks prefer a closer grip. And with this grip, their elbows and shoulders feel the best. They can produce the most force and they feel the tension most in their biceps and at higher reps, they feel the burn. That is the answer to what grip you should use. You should experiment, figure out what's best for you. Folks, some people don't even like barbell curls. Some people prefer easy curls, the bent bar, so much more that that's all they do. That's totally fine. Some people like neither and they prefer dumbbells. That's totally fine. You don't have to do this exercise, but if you're gonna do barbell curls, be it the straight bar or the easy bar, find a grip that works well for you. Experiment. Here's what you're looking for. Do my shoulders feel weird and so weird and so often perhaps so painful that they get in the way of my being able to do the movement properly with full effort, unrestricted? If that's the case, find a different grip. Elbows, same thing. If my elbows feel weird, if my elbows hurt, find something else. Wrists, sometimes your wrists will feel weird in some grip or another. So you've got to play around with all of those. And lastly, are you getting a good stimulus to your biceps? Specifically with heavier weights, do you feel tension running through your biceps or do you feel tension sometimes with some grips, you, you're like your forearms feel really tense, but your biceps are like, I don't know, I don't know if a whole lot is happening. With higher reps, do you feel the burn, the lactic acid accumulating in your biceps or do you feel it somewhere else? Some people will do curls in their forearms, or other parts of their arm will start to feel it. Sometimes their elbows just hurt and then it's absolutely no good. Do you get a bicep pump from it after successive sets? 
And later on, do you feel disruption in the bicep? Do you feel weakness in the bicep, potentially soreness in the bicep? You don't have to feel sore in the biceps because most people don't, but after a bicep workout, do you have a bicep pump and do your biceps kind of feel like jello? If that's the case, great. But if you do curls with a certain grip, your forearms feel like jello and they're the ones that get sore, but your biceps feel nothing, choose a different grip, choose a different execution. Only you know what's best for you. You have to experiment to find what works. What is too heavy or too light for bicep curls? It really, between doing sets of five and doing sets of 30, there's no right answer there except the one that you find in your own experimentation. Some folks will curl in the five to 10 rep range, sets of eight with a barbell and feel an unbelievable amount of tension. Their joints will feel totally fine. It trashes them and it really gets them great results. And they're able to progress in reps and in weight very, very robustly over the course of weeks and months. Some folks really prefer the 10 to 20 rep range for that combination of pump and burn and really, really good connection in the bicep. That's totally fine. Some folks can do barbell curls in the 20 to 30 rep range, although I would say that's more rare because in that rep range, a lot of folks, their forearms will start to be the limiting factor and they don't really feel the biceps anymore. It's one of those where you put the bar down and you're like, ah, ha, 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 ha. you're trying to shake out your forearm cramps. That's not great because the bicep might not be the limiting factor on that. It doesn't itself approach very close to failure. Your forearm does. And the reason you stop the set is because your forearms got tired. Great way to get massive forearms, but there's better ways through actual wrist curls and so on and so forth. So find the rep range in which the biceps feel a ton of tension and or burn and seem to be the limiting factor. For most people, that'll be between five and 20 rep sets. Some people prefer higher. You'll never know unless you try it yourself. And just because barbell curls are no good for super high reps doesn't mean everything is. You might find a machine or dumbbells or cables that you can do for a different rep range much more comfortably. Give it a shot, no dogma, try all these tips and tricks, see what works for you, give it some time, do your best and be honest with yourself about what good technique really is. If you have a question, write it in the comments below. And if you have a good answer, if you know what you're talking about, Try to answer questions. We'll all help each other out. Folks, thank you so much for joining us. See you next time for the next exercise. And hey, real quick, if you have an exercise that you want us to break down, good technique, bad technique, let us know in the comments and we'll try to ignore you because remember, you don't matter.